Welcome to Cyber Chase Green It Up, where it's time to be a nature explorer. My name's Carly, and we are here today at Indy Urban Acres, a project of the Parks Alliance of Indianapolis, to learn a little bit more about how the food that we grow gets from where it's grown to our plate. And I am joined by Tyler. Thanks so much for being here, Tyler. Thanks for coming out. So can you tell me a little bit about where we are right now? Sure, you are standing on an urban farm. This is Indy Urban Acres. We're on the far east side. Um, we're bounded by a highway. There's lots of cars driving by right now, um, but we are able to grow food um, and give it to people that need it. Can you tell us a little bit about what kind of food you grow at the farm? Yeah, we grow a little bit of everything. Anything that you can grow in Indiana, we do. So that's corn, tomatoes, peppers, kale, collard greens, uh, zucchini, you name it, we grow it. Lots of tasty foods, it sounds Of course, like. yeah. And then you grow the food, and then where does the food go after you grow it? That's what's unique about Indy Urban Acres, is that we donate all of our food. So hunger is an issue in Indianapolis, and there's food pantries around the city that are trying to solve that issue and get food um, to people that need it. So all of our food goes um, to food pantries. So the food pantry that we serve the most is just right down the street. We actually just walk it a couple blocks away um, and give it to the people that need it. So all the food that's grown here stays pretty close by, some of it even in walking distance of where we are right now. Yeah. How is that different than most of the food that we eat on a regular basis? Well, when you um, go into the grocery store and go into the produce aisle, most of it isn't locally grown. So uh, a lot of it comes from California, which is a long ways away. So you're talking hundreds, thousands of miles it takes to get food to you. It's a lot of miles to get food to your plate. So you're talking a lot of fossil fuels, a lot of pollution to, to drive all the way here. So it's the transportation getting there and then the resources to get it from wherever it is to the grocery store and then to get it to your house. So lots of resources, lots of energy, lots of time to get it from where it's grown to where you're eating it on your plate. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Tyler. I know that I learned a lot and I hope you learned a lot and we'll think a little bit more about how your food got to your plate next time you're eating. Thanks. Let's learn a little bit more about how our food gets to us as we watch the Cyber Chase clip, Journey of a Thousand Food Miles, where Jackie, Inez, and Digit go on an adventure to figure out how far their cherries traveled to get to their local supermarket. And while you're watching this clip, I want you to use your observation skills to see how many different places the cherries traveled to. Let's take a look. Jax, Inez, you're back. Please tell me you have cherries. No. But we know what happened to them. Hacker took the last batch of the season from Ghoul Foods. What? I don't have an inkling what you're talking about. We found your footprints, Hacker. I want my cherries, Hacker. You're just a tad late. You see, I've used them all to make a dessert of my own. Cherries a la Hacker. I can't believe you used the last of the cherries. My future is doomed. It's going to be OK, Dig. You'll figure something out. We know it. We're sorry we didn't find the cherries until it was too late. We tried, Dig. We really did. You wouldn't believe what we went through today. What do you mean? I'll show you. First, we took a boat from the cherry orchard to the processing plant. That was 25 cyber miles. Then you took a plane, right? Right. We flew from the processing plant all the way to the packaging center on Factoria. That was 500 cyber miles. Then 500 more cyber miles from packaging back to processing. 500 plus 500 is 1,000. Then add the 25 and that makes 1,025 cyber miles. Sheesh, I had no idea. Wait, <laughs> uh, there's more. Next, we took a train 50 cyber miles from processing to the distribution center. And finally, a truck 25 cyber miles back to Ghoul Foods. 25 plus 25 is 50. Plus 50 is 100. Plus 1,000 equals a grand total of 1,100 cyber miles. And that's not the worst part. All of that transportation causes lots and lots of pollution. You and all those miles for me? Thank you for trying so hard. See, Dig, you can't give up. Bon Appetit is still coming. And the last time I checked, 
cherries aren't the only fruit that make a tasty dessert. Were you able to figure out how far those cherries traveled to get to the supermarket? How many different places did the cherries have to go to get to the store? What about the trucks that were driving the food around? And how did that impact the animals and plants that were around the area? Did you know that you can figure out how far your food has traveled to get to you? Just by looking at the labels. You can gather some items in your pantry like we have here, some honey, some green beans, some peaches, or whatever you might have laying around your house. Once you gather your items, then you can make a prediction about how far you think each of those items might have traveled to get to you. Once you've made your predictions, then you can go ahead and look at the label and try and figure out where each of the products came from. So this is some organic raw honey we have here. And the locations are sometimes on different places on the label, so you might have to look around. This one actually is right up front and it says, product of Brazil. Do you know where Brazil is? If you don't, you can look for a map Maybe you have a map at home, a physical map, or you can go online to an online mapping tool and put in your current location and then put in the location of the item like Brazil and figure out how many miles it took for something like honey to get to your house. Since you made your prediction earlier, was your prediction correct? Was it farther than it, you thought it might be? Or was it closer than you might be? And how might you find something like honey that's a little bit closer to home? Thanks so much for joining us today and learning a little bit more about Food Miles. And I hope next time you're eating something on your plate, whether it's honey or tomatoes, you'll think a little bit more about how far that food traveled to get to your house and how you might reduce your food miles and eat a little bit more locally. Thanks again to Indy Urban Acres and the Parks Alliance of Indianapolis for showing us around the farm today. Thanks again. And if you're looking for more activities, you can check out wfyi.org slash curiosity club. Until next time.